We're always looking for control in our lighting and how we can rig things on a set and if you're doing it wrong in relationships. But with our lighting specifically, we use a lot of different tools to try to shape and control the light. Barn doors, flags, diffusion, window blinds, you name it. But nothing gives you quite as precise control as a spotlight and Aperture's got one. So we're gonna talk about it. Before we get into everything, just a heads up, no one gave me this unit. I purchased everything you see here with my own money, and the only contact I've had with Aperture is about a slight issue that I had with my unit in particular, which I'll get to later. The spotlight mount with one lens comes in at $499. Additional lenses are available for $259 each, and you can swap them out in seconds. The spotlight mount comes in a hard case with its single lens, either 19, 26, or 36 degrees, whichever you choose at the time of purchase. Inside, you'll find the mount, a set of three gobos for you to experiment with, and a handy little cleaning kit. Although, just a heads up, the cloth in here left fuzz all over my lens when I tried to use it, and the brush dropped a bunch of bristles that stuck to the glass almost immediately. The blower works, though. Now, I've spoken before about how I normally love Aperture's cases, but this one hasn't quite lived up to my expectations. The second or third time I closed it, I noticed that I had somehow managed to crack the lid panel, seemingly from the inside out. I don't remember trying to shove the lid down at any point. I'm normally very careful with my gear, so I don't know how this could have happened, but it was a bit of a bummer. Other than the crack in mine, the case is nice enough and it carries the thing, so it works. Now onto the unit itself. It should come as no surprise that it's built to last. The main barrel and the yoke are all made of metal and it feels very secure. This is the kind of thing that you can buy once and then keep using as your lighting package evolves and grows. The downside of this being sturdy is that it is quite heavy, coming in at over 10 pounds with the 19 degree lens and 11.5 pounds with the 36 degree. Now this makes sense though, because there's huge pieces of glass inside the barrel. So it's not the kind of thing you wanna trip while carrying because it'll try to drag you down with it. Trust me, I know. Now I wanted to give you guys a full featured review, so I purchased some extra things with my 36 degree lens kit. I picked up the 19 degree lens to see the range between the widest and the narrowest beams that Aperture offers, a pack of 10 more size B gobos, and the Aperture Iris, which is built specifically for this unit. When you buy the extra lens, you get a nifty little soft case that has a shoulder strap. The Iris has a place in the Spotlight's hard case already cut out for it, so you can slide that right in and never carry it separately. So when you mount the Spotlight, you want to use the yoke that comes on the mount itself, not the yoke of your light. This is too heavy to be using the yoke of the 300D Mark II or something like that to hang it off of. So you're gonna mount your Spotlight to your actual stand, and then you'll grab your light and stick it on there. It mounts just like any other Bowens mount thing, and then you turn it on. There you go. So once you've got the light on, you can use the little screw that's on this side and you can unscrew that and then you can push the barrel in and out to focus your beam of light. And depending on which way you focus, like if you focus the barrel further forward, you'll get more of a yellow color fringe around the outside of your beam and your shapes. And if you pull it back, you get more of a blue uh, kind of halo effect. So this is chromatic aberration. It's very normal in Leco style lights like this one. It's actually really well controlled on the spotlight mount. So um, it's it's not there very much. And if you're worried about it being noticeable, uh, most people tend to think that if you focus the barrel towards the back and you get that kind of blue fringe, it's a little less noticeable than the yellow fringe. So. Little tip if you're trying to make sure that it's not noticeable when you're focusing. You can control exactly where the light falls by using the cutters that are here on the unit. So you've got four cutters, and the thing you have to remember is that they are upside down and left to right. So your top cutter is actually going to cut your bottom right there, and then your right cutter, for instance, will cut the left side of the beam. So everything's a little bit backwards and it just takes a little bit of time, you'll get used to it. But just keep in mind, like if you wanna cut off the top, go to the bottom and cut off the top. And the same logic applies to your gobos. When you want this window to appear like this with this rounded part up, you need, actually need to stick it in this way. So you pull out your gobo holder and you're gonna drop your gobo into that. And we're gonna position it so it's completely upside down and then we'll drop it into its slot and now our window is right side up. And then from there, you can, again, you can focus the window or defocus it as much as you want. 
and then you tighten that screw when you've got it to where you want it. This is where we actually get to one of the downsides of the spotlight mount versus other Leco style lights. So with this spotlight mount, if I put in my gobo and it's a couple of degrees off and I slide that in there and it looks all kinds of wonky, there's no way for me to fix that without pulling the gobo again and readjusting it. With other Leco style lights, you can rotate the barrel. With this one, that's not an option. And if Aperture does do a version two of this, I would love to see one where you can rotate the barrel rather than having to pull the gobo and kind of fidget with it and then hope it stays in that same orientation as it slides down. So just in front of the gobo holder slot, you have a little door that opens up and you slide that open and you can slot in the iris. So you stick the iris in that slot. You can use it with any gobos you've got in there. And then you can use this stick to open and close the iris, do some funky effects. And then uh, I don't know if this is officially how this is supposed to work. I'm guessing it is, but this is how I'm using it. Um, it's a little loose by default, so it'll just kind of like fall a little bit sometimes. So if you rotate the stick, you kind of screw it tight and that'll hold it in place. And then you can rotate it back counterclockwise and it loosens up and then clockwise and it closes it down. So um, I think that's probably intentional, but it's not mentioned anywhere in any manuals or anything. So if you didn't know about that, uh, fun little tip there. Got two more notes when it comes to gobos. First off, uh, when you pull these out of the unit after they've been sitting in here for a while, they are pretty dang warm to the touch. So I recommend blowing on them or fanning them to try to you know cool them off before you touch them. Um, I still have my fingerprints, but it was a close call the first time I pulled a gobo. So when you're using these, make sure that you you know pull it out give it a little fan and then start touching it because it, it gets a little warm. Now, the other thing that's interesting, and I learned this from a YouTube channel called Gaffer and Gear, which if you haven't found, I absolutely recommend you check out. It's a gaffer down in Australia who does a lot of in-depth reviews and you know kind of talks about his, his world as a gaffer. Awesome guy, awesome channel. Um, with, with this, what he showed me was that with circular patterns, you can do some fun stuff with the iris. So if you pull the focus to where you've got kind of this 3D looking effect. And that's, I'm focusing the barrel closer to the light instead of closer to the wall. T tighten it off and then you use the iris. You can actually get this cool trippy effect as you open and close it. So that's a really neat little thing that you could use as a lighting gag in the background. If you're in like a Blade Runner situation or something like that, you could start to use this in other interesting ways other than just being like a spotlight. So I think this is a really neat idea. And uh, yeah, Andrew Locke over at Gaffer and Gear, thanks for all that you do. You're awesome, man. Um, I love this. On the front of the unit, you have a gel holder. So there's this little tongue right here that you push out of the way. You'll hear it click and then it's held back and you can pull out your gel holder, put whatever color gels you want in here and then slot it back in. And then you just hit this button on the top and it'll pop out like that. And here's where we get to talk about that little issue that I mentioned earlier. I had a slight issue with the gel holder lock on my 36 degree lens. And what was happening was that when I would press it in, it would never actually lock back out of place. It would just pop right back out. So I would have to hold the lock back try to pull the gel holder and go through that whole rigmarole. I emailed Aperture Support. They told me what screwdriver I needed. A Torx T7 is what they said, but I only had a T6 and that worked just fine. And I took the assembly apart. It's a fairly simple mechanism. And I think that one of these springs had gotten misaligned and caught on the lock mechanism. After putting it back together, it's working just fine. Now, those of you out there who are the most astute may have noticed this little red lever on the side. So this is used for loosening and tightening the yoke. And that seems fairly elementary. And why am I taking the time to mention this? Well, it's because people are messing up their spotlight mounts. So this has been a problem that's come up a couple of times um, to the point where Aperture actually addressed it in their Aperture user group on Facebook, which I definitely recommend you join. There's lots of helpful tips in there. But um, what people have started doing is just trying to like force the spotlight mount to move just a little bit while it's locked off. And as you do that over time, you end up introducing play into the yoke. So it just feels loose and it's never really tightened in one spot. And the reason that's happening is there are four little screws under this cover with the disc that uh, is, is being held on to to lock the mount. And those screws are coming loose when you force this. So if you're having that issue, if you've been forcing it to move while it's locked off, just pull off this cover, 
there's four little screws in there. You just tighten those back down and you'll be able to you know, have your, your solid lock off again. But uh, in general, I would suggest you loosen the yoke, then move it, then tighten it again, rather than trying to force it to do those little fine tuning movements. Cause you're, it, it's just, you know, really hard on your gear. And I generally recommend you try to be gentle on these things, even if they are professional tools, because you want to not buy another one. You want to keep it around for a while. Let's get to some numbers. I set up the spotlight mount three meters away from my wall, hooked up my 300D Mark II and took some measurements. For the 36 degree lens at three meters, I measured 4,200 lux at the center of the beam, 2,000 lux at the edge of the beam and a projected circle of 57.5 inches. For the 19 degree at the same distance, I measured 9,600 lux at the center of the beam and 6,000 lux at the edge of the beam. The circle size dropped down from 57 and a half inches to 28 and 7 eighths inches. Interestingly enough, the 19 degree lens has a hard edge of the projected image circle, but it also seems to have another outer band of light spread. I'm not sure exactly why this happens. I'm sure some physicists could tell me, but I don't know any. So I guess we'll all just have to wonder. For comparison, the standard hyper reflector at three meters spits out 3,600 lux at the center, 600 lux at the edge, and just has a whole crap ton of spread. And minimizing spread is what the spotlight is all about. If you wanted to focus all of that output from your light on something like I don't know, a sign all the way across the street. The spotlight enables you to do that, to put a lot of light on that one particular point without being anywhere near the edge of frame. So one of the very interesting things you can do with something like the spotlight mount or a Leco light or a data light is you can work with very controlled and precise reflected light. Now there are systems out there that do this already. You've got the light bridge system, you've got the cinema reflected light system, there's different manufacturers making these different reflectors that have different levels of diffusion, which is all very fun and nice, but they're expensive. So we're going to try and do something similar today using the uh, the humble hobby mirror. So we picked up a couple of these, uh, thanks to my buddy Chris for bringing these over and for filming me right now, you're awesome buddy. And we're going to go ahead and try to light a little tabletop scene here uh, using just one light source, but having multiple different sources that actually hit what we're lighting. So that's the goal. First though, we actually need something to light. We've got a nice glass of wine for people to enjoy and some irresistible crackers and fruit. Okay, so now I've got a couple of mirrors already placed, ready for us to use. We're gonna turn on the 300D with the spotlight mount on it. We're using the 19 degree lens, and then we're gonna try and position these mirrors so that we can light this scene and make it look like natural, you know, morning daylight coming through a window or something. Hey, Editor Garrett here, just dropping in real quick to let you know this was the first time we'd ever tried this. We are working on improving this technique to where we can talk about it. This is not the best example of this, but it's an idea that you can go and research. Okay. Back to the show. So first we'll start with our main mirror. And so I'm just gonna loosen this grip head and we'll just move that in. And there we go. Now we've got our main source of light. So here we've got a very natural source of light. It's hard light, which is you know how the sun actually feels. And um, what we can do now is add an extra mirror that will add an accent light. So we wanna highlight the glass just a little bit more. We'll grab our second mirror here that I've uh, just taped to this gobo head because we're too cheap to buy the baby pins. And <laughs> we're gonna move that up into our stream of light and so there we're catching it, and now we can just maneuver that until we're hitting right on the glass and then tighten that down. So there you have it. That is an extra little bit of light that's just hitting the glass. Now we have two separate light sources that are both coming from just this one light right here, and it feels very natural and like it's being reflected around in the morning. So an interesting little system you can use. Now you could try to add, you know, different uh, coverings to this to diffuse it in different ways. Um, we might make a video on that later, but for right now, this is just the basic idea of how this system could work and the kind of things you could do if you get a little creative. Now, I've been using the spotlight mount primarily to spruce up the backgrounds in interview setups. Here, I created a slice of light across the cabinets in the back. In this shot, I wanted to give motivation to my key light, so I used the window gobo to make it seem as though a window was on the left of frame, even though the only thing over there was a TV. You can very easily swap from one look to another with a spotlight mount. 
And because the cutters and the gobos are built in, you can do it all with one stand instead of setting up cookies or flags in front of the light with another C-stand or whatever you have on hand. Now those extra gobos may seem a little cheesy and strange, but most gobos are meant to play out of focus. So real quick, here's a look at all these gobos across the focus range of the spotlight. Some of these, like the fireworks gobo, can be used in tandem with the built-in lighting effects for some stylized looks. In some situations, you may not have enough room to set up a softbox or something like that. So you can use a bounce board and the spotlight to create a large, softer source in a tight corner. Maybe you need your character to experience some divine intervention. Use the spotlight mount instead of a voice actor and you'll never have to pay royalties. Oh, and you can use it as a spotlight. Did we, did we forget to mention that? <laughs> So, it increases output, it throws light a heck of a long way, and you can use it to anchor a small boat. I've only had it long enough to shoot a few real shoots so far, but it's one of the tools that gets packed every time because there's always something that we can do with it. And it's normally something we couldn't do with another tool nearly as easily. The spotlight mount isn't the least expensive modifier on the market, but it gives you a crazy amount of control. And that's worth the price of admission. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you have any questions about the spotlight or have suggestions on how we can make these videos more useful for you, please let us know in the comments. If you liked what you saw here today and you learned something, hit like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.